Property Graduate is proudly sponsored by Surtax Accounting. Property Graduate is the show for aspiring property developers and investors to win a life-changing opportunity that money can't buy. The prize is twofold, forming a property company with renowned property guru John Howard and owning 50% of the shares. John is one of the most experienced property developers and investors in the UK today. With almost four decades experience in the industry, he's been there and done that, having purchased and sold around 4,000 homes, apartments and developments. This savvy businessman is putting £1 million of his own money into the new company so the winner can buy and develop a property. With a 50% stake in it, they'll automatically receive a 50% share of the profit and potentially have John as a business partner for life. You're watching Property Graduate. To become Property Graduate 2023, our competitors will have to make it through three rounds. That's the interviews, the challenge, and then finally the deal. There can only be one winner. John has enlisted Kirsty Darkins and Fiona Talbot, both highly experienced in the property industry, to help him whittle down the applicants. In this episode, the first six competitors will have to face John, Kirsty, and Fiona and convince them why they should be put through to round two. Welcome everyone to the Property Graduate 2023. We're here in Canary Wharf. If you want to see big deals, just look around you here. Very exciting day for me, for Fiona, for Kirsty, for all of us. Tristan's been working with me for, what, nine months now? We're getting there. So, what's very important today is you bring your A game. Make sure you give it everything you've got because that's so, so important today. So congratulations. So guys, you're all the lucky few that have been selected to come down here today. And it's a real challenge getting past the first interview. You need to demonstrate your credibility, what you've been up to, where you can go, and you know, draw down on experiences that you've had and how you're gonna be able to find something and demonstrate that you really are gonna be the next property graduate. I wish you all luck and good luck to getting through. So you've taken the plunge and you've decided to apply for Property Graduate. Yeah. What was your reason behind that? I saw a post on LinkedIn by Tristan because I connected with him a few years ago and I thought, the let's give spinner. it a go, yeah. And what do you want? What are you looking for? What do you want to do? I just want to supercharge my property business. Um, I've been in it for a couple of years and I really like a challenge and I'm trying to get rid of any limiting beliefs and any um, obstacles and yeah, any limits on myself. Looks like to me, from your application, you are a rent-to-rent -rent expert. That's that right. True? Yes, I love my rent-to-rents. Do you? Mm -hmm. I can't think anything worse, so you're going to have to convince me <laughs> on that one. Um, okay, and you want to do HMOs? Yeah, I'm right in the middle of HMOs, yeah. I'd just like to know, how do you buy a beach? I've bought a pub <laughs> and I've bought hotels and I've bought all sorts of She's things. Got one up on blocks. you, Fiona. But I've never bought a beach. How do you manage that? It was a great adventure. Uh, my background is scuba diving. So I qualified as an instructor when I was 18 on my gap year. And I spent all my summers throughout university working in Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, and Fiji. Um, I got back, met my husband, still had really itchy feet and just loved the adventure, loved the challenge of learning new languages and meeting people and the beach lifestyle. Uh, but it doesn't give you much money in savings. You can pay your rent, you can have a few beers with your guests, but you're not building anything. So I thought, I need to do this, I need to get my own business. So I said to my husband, would you like to start a diving business with me in Southeast Asia? Luckily, he said yes. And we built an off-grid scuba diving resort. And how did you translate that into building a portfolio of rent to rent properties? How do you translate those skills into starting to invest in property? So we sold it after five years. We always planned to build it as a business, add the value and sell it, which we did successfully in 2018. Uh, we had two kids out there as well, which is another story trying to get from a remote island mm. to the hospital in the middle of the night, but that was fine. And we moved back to the UK so our kids could go to school. Uh, I then wanted to start my own business again, but I wanted the support of the franchise. So I looked into different franchise models, one of which was a rent-to-rent -rent HMO franchise. 
Um, I know it can be done very badly after a one day course. I wanted all the support, all the compliance. I wanted all the boxes mm. ticked. Yep. And I got that support, knowledge and training from the guys who run the franchise. And that kind of catapulted my business. Uh, I've been there nearly two years. We've now got 15 HMOs, around 80 tenants. And I'm now looking at HMO conversions because with the cash flow that's coming from my rent to rents, I'd like to start buying and owning. And just my personal mission is to raise the standard of HMOs because I view loads of them and they're just studenty and a bit grotty mm. and that shouldn't be the standard of HMOs. And when you work with John, uh, looking out for your interests here, yeah. when you're working you. with John next year, mm. if, you're, if you happen to win the property graduate, is that the strategy you're going to push with John? You know, let's do more HMOs, John. Let's get HMO conversions, John. Is that what you're going to be doing? I think the HMO conversion model is a really good one. Um, I'm working with some people at the moment who have done a lot of them. They've got a good blueprint for it. Um, and I like to learn from experts. I'm not going there on my own saying that three bed could make a seven bed. I want to speak to the mm. architect. I want to speak to planning, licensing. People have all the knowledge that I can draw from. I love doing that kind of thing. So we just want to raise that standard for-, for I have to say, people. Sophie, it doesn't really do it for me. Why not? I used to do bed sits years mm. ago, and that's what they used to be called. Mm. And I know the luxury HMO market is 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 is, is an interesting market. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it isn't, but I want to turn the money over. Mm -hmm. So if we're investing a million pounds, um, I want a return of 1.4, 1.5 million that we share together. How are we going to do that with HMO? We do projects that turn around within about eight months, and yep. they get revalued. So you put about. 470 to 500,000 in, it gets revalued at 680 to 700. We can pull some of that cash out, about 30% uh, return on cash that you've employed, and we can do it again. We've got a cash flowing asset that will okay. keep going. All right. Um, but and what it's, sorry, I've, is that uh, based on a commercial valuation or a bricks and mortar valuation? It's a valuation? commercial valuation. So yeah. you were, do you ever worry you're over leveraging the bricks and mortar value of the property if things went sideways? Perhaps, but I think there will always be a demand. There will always be a market for it. You've been in this business um, a long time. Yeah. It's in the ups and downs. <laughs> I've, 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 I've smiled at that a little bit, yeah. Sophie. Only because, I mean, you know, I've seen, I've seen it, it when banks decide they won't allow that mm, sort of valuation sure. and they only allow a bricks and mortar valuation. Kirsty, I mean, you've seen that. As a charter surveyor especially, yeah, how I mean, would you look at it? Because uh, it's, I think it's risky. But I think it's riskier having one, one exit. So I think I think multiple yeah. exits is, is is what you need. Now the other thing I'm thinking is managing 15 HMOs. That's a lot of work, mm -hmm. which is why I don't do it because I'm obviously <laughs> much lazier than you. Um, but you know that it is a lot of work. How how will you continue with the business that you've already got, as well as have the time to build a partnership with John and get out there and find the deals. For me, it's all about systemizing and processing it. So after our 10th property, we took on a lettings manager. We're now employing a handyman and I want this business to run without me. That's the, that's, the aim. That's I've sensible. now taken on yeah. a second business in Bournemouth with a business partner and our whole aim is to systemize them so they're running really well without us. Um, what I'm also trying to do is increase my visibility for a few reasons. I want to encourage more girls into property. Yeah. We've got a podcast. Well, you can't get Don't we all? two great exa examples <laughs> exactly. of that sitting here. Yeah, Fantastic. and what I feel is you can't be what you can't see. So let's get that visibility. So I'm writing for a property magazine. I've got a monthly article. I've got a podcast. I've got you know networking events yeah. I do. And through that, people are bringing me other deals. Yeah. So I might say, mm. oh, John, how about this one? It's not an HMO, yeah. but it's a really well, interesting that'll be a welcome change by the sound of things. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but it's um, amazing what yeah. you can do with a network of people who are I doing agree. different things and, I agree. and opening up the possibilities. But what I find with most of these people on these networking things, mm. I have to say, and I sound a bit cynical, is that they don't, they don't, there's not enough margin in these deals they're doing, you know. And the problem is with tight margins, you only need the market to turn a little bit like it is now, and suddenly there's big mm. problems. A lot of the people. Um, not everyone, of course, and I mean the three of us are hugely experienced, vastly experienced, and we've seen we've seen you know recessions. Uh, and if we're coming into a property recession now, a lot of the people that you're probably dealing with haven't seen that before and think it's always going to be a sunny day. And we all know mm -hmm. on this panel yeah. that it's not the case. That's what worries me about that type. You know, that yeah. I'm not being I'm trying to be mm. rude, but just that type of person that is 
is is thinking that it's always not 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 so much you, Sophie, but the people who round yeah. you who think it's always going to be a sunny day because it yeah. isn't. I can assure you. Yeah, I'm tough. all about the numbers. I yeah. absolutely love okay. a spreadsheet, and I will base everything on the most conservative. Yep. Figures. Okay. Well, that's that, that's very good to hear, mm. Sophie. Thank you very much for coming in today. It's very interesting to hear your story, and we'll see you later. Thank you. It's Thank really you. really nice to be it's here. A pleasure. With you all. Why have you decided to apply for Property Graduate? Really been trying to work on my public speaking at the minute, so I have a stammer and I went on a speech course back in 2020 called uh, the Maguire Programme. So since that course, the fear's really gone and I've just been on a mission and this is hopefully just another opportunity to progress my speech and hopefully work with, with John, definitely. I mean, tapping into that um, unbelievable skill set and knowledge would really spring spring um, board my career in property development. And of course you're going up against not just John but Kirsty and Fiona. How do you feel about that? Yeah I've never done anything nice before so really excited to, to hopefully do the best I can in front of those guys and give a good account of myself yeah. Ben welcome. Um, you Thank say you. in the application you're extremely driven Ben, I don't want to disappoint you, but you're going to have to be a bit more than that to win this <laughs> million pounds funding. Yeah. So you've got a, a property on the Isle of somewhere? Sky, yeah. Isle of Sky. That's right. uh, yeah. Let's start off there, shall we? <clears throat> yeah, so it started in, back in maybe 2019, I think it was. So went up to Isle of Sky and we converted mum's outbuilding into a little um, self-contained studio apartment for SA. So that was Did really that require good. planning? It did, yes, yes. That was a really good experience. So that's sort of given me construction foundation now, which I think is really good going to this next stage. Then saw how mum's, how well mum's property was doing. So we've got our own service accommodation property in Portree. So that does really well. Um, so I set the website up and did all the direct booking, set that up and did the dynamic pricing and things like that. So that's been a good experience. That's interesting. I, I've got a couple of developments I've bought part finished that I'm finishing in, in Scotland at the moment. So I'm quite fond of Scotland. I keep keep flying up there. Yeah. Kirsty. So tell us about um, the B&B in Northumberland. Yes, yeah, so just purchased that. That completed in January. That was yeah six months of pain trying to get that one across the line. But that was a good experience. It allowed me to build up my network um, in the process. So yeah, that's going to be seven double bedroom on suite self-check-in hotel. So like a part hotel with little kitchenettes in each room. And you find you've got economies of scale at seven? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, massive cash flow. Um, yeah, <laughs> looking for, yeah. And what would be your exit from an investment like that? Because obviously if you, part if you partner with John, John's looking for the capital uplift for you to share the capital uplift. So how, how would you exit that kind of investment? Want to really drive the P&L forward maybe in the first 12 months, really optimize that business model as best as you can, reduce your costs, increase your revenue, high occupancy, then get the commercial valuation. Um, and then that allows, that allows the exit or, or to sell um, if that's not something you want to hold in your portfolio. A million pounds goes a long way uh, up in Scotland and the Northeast. <laughs> yeah. So would your strategy be to continue in SA or, or what, what is it that you would want to focus on if you were working with John? All I've done this last 12 months is just focus on this party tell strategy. So that, that's that's what I've really nailed down at the minute. So I think there's so much opportunity to keep pushing that forward, um, trying to find tired B&B owners that want an exit and they've worked hard all their life. Yeah. And this is just a great opportunity to add value to those gorgeous buildings. I think there's nothing wrong with having knowing what you want to do investment wise is that you know it's quite a, no, it's it, a it's refreshing to know that you that's what you want to stick at in a way it's not really my bag but i'm sure that there's ways we, there's ways we can work around that a little bit um but it is refreshing that you you know what you want and you're going for it um fiona i just like to say well done for working with your mum <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm true. That's, that's impressive. To Do you me, want though. your dad too? <laughs> yeah, very funny, very funny, very funny. But well done. I mean, that's my dream. I've got two sons, and I'd love that. Uh, they think property's too hard. I'm not yeah. sure they will, so... but there we go. <laughs> yeah. Can you swap out your mum as a business partner for John? Do you think? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Would that go but, down yeah. well, or cause a yeah, sticky, yeah. sticky Christmas dinners? Yeah, she's amazing at design. So I don't know if that. Oh, are that's you, how, yeah, how's oh your my design God. I am going? terrible. Yeah. You don't want me anywhere near design, but but of course the great thing about property is that you need all sorts of different skill sets and if you haven't got them which i certainly haven't got 
you can go and get them. In, your, in, in this case, it will be your mum doing the design. So that's brilliant. Yeah. And I expect, because she loves you, she won't charge, which is even better. <laughs> so, uh, What do you think differentiates you from all the other candidates here today? Why should we choose you as a property graduate? It's been great getting to know everyone and building that network. They're all very strong candidates and I'm sure they'll bring their own thing. I am an accountant by trade, so know my numbers. Yep. And I spent the last two years as a contract manager. That's really allowed me to progress those other soft skills that I need to be successful in this industry. And just ex extremely driven. Yeah, extremely driven. To, uh, Which we come different. back to the first thing I mentioned when it said So you're actually driven. employed yeah. now during the day? I am. I handed my notes in on September last year and I've got two months left um, till I finish. So it's a bit of a fully sent it moment at the minute, yeah. Mm. And, do you, and did you feel you needed to hand your notice in to do these these other jobs, these other bit deals you're doing, or could you have kept kept the job as well? If that deal hadn't gone through, I would have done rent to rent. I was I've a position in my life where I just needed to do my own yeah. thing now, okay. so good I was done you. with a corporate good, career. No, good for mm. you. Good for you. It takes confidence to do that as well, doesn't Absolutely it? Absolutely does. Yeah, and well done for doing it. You know, you, early. Did, you did that for years ago, <laughs> didn't you? I did it, but it took me way too long. <laughs> And you haven't looked back since. I, I just like to know what attracts you to working with John in particular. Follow all you guys on LinkedIn. What you're doing is incredible. That's where I want to be. And I just think what I've learned the last few years is you need to be working with people better than you and um, they can guide you and they're learning from their mistakes to shortcut my route to where I want to get to. I think I think that's absolutely right. I, you know, we, you're all, we're all learning. We're still learning every day. Um, there's always something that we, you know, something new to learn. And, and I think that's right. Surround yourself with the best people, as we said earlier. Um, it's got to be the best, the best tactic. And how much was the apart hotel? It was 238,000. And is that the highest deal you've ever done to date? Yes. So jumping from 230 to a million is quite a big stretch. Mm -hmm. We haven't got to spend it all in one go. <laughs> we can do two or three. Do a few. We can do a few. Yeah. But I, with, I see your point, Fiona, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. times five, what you've currently done to date. Yeah. Does that cause you any concerns or? I mean, going from where I was, that SA business to this apart hotel, it's a massive jump for me. And I just, it's just the next big one, hopefully I can. But you're not jumping with your own money, are you? You're jumping with John's money. No, that's correct. So more due diligence, more- More pressure. More, yeah, more, more pressure, more making sure that it's a solid investment, have good exit plans. Yeah. 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 Well, you know what they say, pressure is a privilege. Mm -hmm. So remember that going forward. Um, thank you very much, uh, Ben, for coming to see us today and we'll see you later. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bonjour, Daniel. Ça va? Ça va, merci. <laughs> and I speak French because you say you've just flown in from Paris for this. Oh, uh, yeah. Why have you decided to take part in Property Graduate? So for the last uh, three or four years, I've been sort of getting involved with property. Um, I started with I kind of became an accidental landlord uh, by buying a property about 10 years ago. And now I'm just looking to sort of take it to the next step by uh, working with somebody like John. How do you think he could help you? Yeah, John's just sort of expertise uh, can help me. So I think that's something that I lack. I'm sort of able to find the deals and, and sort of do analysis on it. Um, but having John's sort of experience with actually executing the sort of uh, refurbishment or conversion That'll definitely help because I've had a, a couple of uh, mistakes with that in the past. Daniel, good to see you here. Thank you for coming. You're a former trader, so you say that numbers are going to be solid. Your numbers are going to be solid. Yeah. Um, well, that's the least we need, isn't it? Um, what are you doing at the moment property-wise? Uh, so right now I'm looking through auction catalogues mostly. Um, for sort of commercial properties. And then my sort of day job is I'm a software engineer and I'm working on a startup in the property space as well. Okay, so are you holding the commercial properties as investments? Or yeah, you... so I've got a commercial property in London, uh, which I bought um, during COVID. Uh, it was let to a vet, so it's a sort of long-term hold. Yeah. But, Can't go wrong with vets. Um, yeah, so, but what interested me was not like the yield or something. It was just that it was cheap on a pound per square foot mm. basis yeah. where it was. And that was just because the yield was quite low. So the type of people who were going to buy it were like yield investors. Um, and so I was able to, to get it pretty cheap. And then 
the idea is if there's any problems with the vets, I could use PD as like a backup to convert the yeah. back into residential. Okay. How long a lease have the vets got? So it's 15 years with five year rent reviews. And is it, um, is it, in, is it within the 1954 Act? It is. Um, okay. So that is one of the problems, but there's also, there's like airspace as well, which is potential. Um, yeah. So it's got like a flat roof. Um, there's two shops next to each other. The idea is to like try and buy up the whole parade. So there's yeah. uh, six shops in total. The, uh, the only problem with, with, with buying up whole parades, you can get a little bit, bit like Monopoly, you can get a bit excited because you want the one next door, can't you, Kirsty? And then you end up yeah. paying a bit more than you should. And then the last one, they know, you know, they know you want it. So then they charge more. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that really. Yeah. But congratulations, uh, Daniel. Sounds like you've, you're, you're, you're well on your way. Um, Fiona. Well, I love a little bit of assembly. You got me. I'm, I'm doing a few different assembly deals. I love them. Uh, and I, I just use different, different entities to approach them and, and letter drop and stuff so they don't suss out the fact that I'm doing that. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a catch me if you can, if so to speak. Um, so uh, why did you stop being a trader then? If you were good at numbers, surely that would have been quite a successful route for you, to yeah. trading. So I was, I was working at a, it was a new company in Amsterdam. I was uh, like the sixth employee. And the thing was, there was sort of like a limit to my potential working at a company like that. So it sounds like you've do, done a lot with the auctions. Are you opportunity led? Mostly look at auctions. Um, but what I'm finding sort of the last 12 months is doing a lot of DD on properties and then they go for a very high price in the auctions. So I've sort of reversed that a little bit and look at what gets unsold and then mm -hmm. do DD on that. You are a breath of fresh air, Daniel, because that's exactly what you should be doing. Look mm. at them after the auction, because if, if there's people want to pay too much for them, good luck to them. You don't yeah. want to waste your time, and then you can stick to the ones that haven't sold uh, and, and do it that way. So I, I'm sure that's a good idea. When did you do your last deal? How long has it um, been? So it was around April 2022. So it was about a year ago, a year ago. Um, for this, for the vets. And yeah, I, mm -hmm. I purchased it with cash. Um, and yeah, that was just because um, the idea was just to have cash flow as like the worst possible uh, scenario, which is what I currently have. And there's also like an opportunity as well because it's more than 25% commercial. So the leaseholders above um, can't set up a right to manage or something like that. So there's a way to, um, you know, increase the service yeah. charges. Good. And, Maybe yeah. make money like that. Good. So April 2022, have you had funds to go again? Yeah, I've got funds to go again. Because yeah. I've been investing all this time myself and found that there are opportunities out there and have bought at auction. Yeah. So it sounds to me like you might oh, be a bit busy and not able to look for opportunities. No, so I've, what stopped you? I mean, I've bid, I, bid, I bid on a property in the last uh, Savills auction and the one before. Pre-auction offers. Yeah. I, I don't really like to go pre-auction no. because read, then they know like what... Read, sounds like he's read my book on auction. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Because then they know like what you're going to bid up to. So why why would they accept it really? But I think, um, I think that's... I think on, on the whole, there's exceptions to every rule, mm. but I think on the whole, you're probably right. Kirsty. So if you were working with John, would you consider other sourcing strategies yeah. to broaden your reach and what would they be? Um, right now I, I do look at auctions just because I know that there's like a, a big supply of properties coming through auction. Um, but the other thing that I do is I look on Estates Gazette and just mm. put in London 100 mile radius yeah. and I look at that pretty much every day and it's filtered by the most recent properties and then I just um, you know see what's available and also, if something is maybe a bit too expensive three or four months ago, I can then go back and say, like, is it still available? That, can yeah, you reduce Daniel, the price? That's very interesting. The Estates Gazette used to be the property developer's Bible years ago. It used to be the place to go to with all before internet and everything. I know I'm sounding like a dinosaur, Chris, uh, before you mention it. But it was the place to go because, you know, all the deals it arrived on your mat on a Saturday morning. You tick everything you want to go and ring up about on a Monday morning to the agents and you go and look at it that week, literally. And um, well done you, because uh, not many people mention the, the Gazette these days, but it is still a good magazine. Mm. So Daniel, thank you very much for coming. Um, very interesting listening to you. And we will see you later on. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank you. for having me. So Andres, what inspired you to apply for Property Graduates? I think it was, um, you know, I've been in property for a while, um, short short term, I suppose, in the, in the grand scheme of things since 2019. And I'm, running, I'm in property full time now as well, and I've 
really big passion for it as well. You know, I think the mission for me has always been to move into bigger stuff, you know, developments. Um, I'm originally from Denmark, so I'd really love to bring some of that build quality and standard living here to the UK as well. So that's, that's sort of a mission of mine, I suppose, to create like, better homes and uh, yeah, you know, what better opportunity than uh, through Property Graduate. It's not always plain sailing in property. Have you had any sort of really big things you've learned from, a disaster perhaps? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I think it's, you know, it's one, it's a game where you constantly have to stay on your toes. You know, you always have to adapt. Uh, things never go the way you want them to, you know. I've done a lot of refurbs and stuff like that in my time now, and I think especially there, you've got a lot of things going wrong or, you know, deals falling out of bed last minute. And, you know, I've gone from a nine to five job to this now, and I've always joked it's almost like going into a 24 seven job, because you never know when something's gonna come up and you just gotta deal with it as best as you can when it comes up and, and take the challenge. Andreas, welcome to the Property Graduate. Thank you very much. 2023. Now, you say in your application that you are property expert in property investment. That's true. Well, expand, uh, please. Expand. Um, so you seem very young to be a property <laughs> investment expert to me, but. I don't know if I'm, I'm an expert as such, but I think I've, uh, I've learned a lot in relatively short time in property. So I've only been in property since 2019, but in that time I've managed to build a successful property sourcing business that I operate in Leeds, and I went full-time into that in 2021. Um, worked with numerous different clients, uh, different types of strategies and different types of budgets. So I've, I've seen a lot in a very short, short period, period of time. time. How do you find deals off-market? Uh, off-market uh, is not something I, I do a lot because I find it's, it can be unreliable to be honest, especially direct to vendor. So I've, I've dabbled a lot in it in the past, but I found, find with off-market often, you don't know what you're gonna get. You know, you, you know, I've done Facebook ads, I've done all your letters and leaflets and all of that in the past, but you know, you never know who's gonna be on the other side of that phone. Okay, so, so how do you find deals? So I like to leverage my relationships with, you know, agents in the area, so uh, they, know who our business is now, they know we bring, you know, good buyers, they know we're good buyers as well. So I like to leverage those relationships and, you know, agents have the best deals often. You just gotta, you know, get your foot in the door with them and uh, have a good relationship with them and they'll treat you well. So that's how I prefer to find my deals. Do you pay them a finder's fee? Uh, sometimes, yeah, um, depends, depends on the deal, you know, but we always try and like reciprocate what we can. So, you know, Oftentimes we'll, you know, bring the lettings back to them, for example, yeah. so they get a little bit of money out yeah. of it as well. Or, okay. So it's a people business. Yeah. And when did you do last deal? Uh, last deal we completed on a week ago. A week? Yeah, yeah a week ago. Uh, and then we've got another one completing about a week's time. So we constantly have like a, a, f a few on the go. <laughs> How many have you got on the go at the moment? Nine or 10 in legals at the moment. We usually complete on about, on average, I'd say about four a month at this moment in the time. And it's kind of like, we're, we're ramping that up a lot. We've spent uh, a lot of effort recently, you know, really upping the branding and, you know, the, the company like uh, social proof as it were, you know, getting testimonials and reviews from all the investors yeah. we work testimonials with. Testimonials are always very important. Yeah. Uh, where do you see the market going in the next two years? I think there's gonna be a ton of opportunity. I think we've come from a really tough market. You know, we, we've certainly seen our share of that, you know, uh, obviously property, Prices are a lot cheaper in the north where I'm based. Um, but even still, you know, we were seeing a market where everything was going at absolute ludicrous prices. Uh, and it was very tough to compete in that market. And I find now we've kind of transitioned into a really good mix of buyer and seller's market where you start getting the opportunities again, you can negotiate. The agents have to ha actually have to work hard now to like sell the deals again. And, you know, you can talk a little bit more easily with them again. And being that busy, what capacity would you have if you won the property graduate and then got the opportunity to work with John to bring that into what you're doing? Well, You've I think got spare capacity? I, I would say so, yeah. I know I'm, I'm a systems and processes guy. So before I got into property, I was a software engineer. So I'm very confident with my systems and processes. I love that side of the business. So I believe, you know, any successful business, you need to delegate and you need to automate where you can. Mm. So I've spent a lot of effort and time myself in my own business to automate and delegate as much as I can. So I've got a really good team that I use uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm constantly like 
improving that as well. So, you know, I always kind of free myself up for opportunities that might come up. So I'm not spending too much time in the business, but I'm spending more time on the business. So based in Leeds, what's the typical value of your average deal? So I would say the, the, the range where the best deals are in, in that area of the country is around anywhere from like 75,000 up to 200,000, depending on what you're looking at, you know, for your buy to lets and your yeah. single So let. my next question is a million pounds is a lot of money yes. in your investment patch. Yeah. What will you do with it? I would look to split that on multiple deals. Um, I think, like I said, service accommodation is something that when I go into property, it's, it's what I wanted to move towards. I wanted to cut my teeth on, you know, your more simple stuff, buy to lets, yeah. all of that stuff first, which I think I have. And now I'm getting, you know, my head around service accommodation, done really well with it. Um, and I just want to keep expanding that as well. So you source a service accommodation strategy for, for John for this joint venture? It's certainly something I would look at, yeah. But equally, you know, I'm, I'm keen, uh, I wrote my application as well, you know, I'm keen to sort of get into the development space a little bit more as well. But using my knowledge of, you know, service accommodation, buy to lets and all of this to utilize the best strategies for, you know, bigger units as well. If you're developing, say, flats and then being able to convert that appropriately. The one thing I would say is whatever we do, we need to move the money, keep moving the money. I was yeah. told many years ago by a very, a very good um, property developer, always keep your money moving. Always have something you're selling, something you're buying. And Fiona, you're, 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 you're great at that. You've always got lots of deals happening and things happening. Mm. And I think the only thing with the service accommodation is unless we get our money out of it to go again with the money, you know, we're stuck with a service. Would you say you get stuck with service accommodation? It produces a profit rent perhaps, but... Really, it does, but it's another it job, it you know? Really so it's a hands-on it's a hands -on it, investment strategy. It doesn't you know? really do it for me. But he could create that. a system and process for it if he's a systems process I'm, guy. I've already done that, to be fair. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, well, I'll uh, leave that to you because that will bore me to death. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I do agree with you. I think, you know, I've been very fortunate to have really good mentors in property already and, you know, yeah. said something very similar to to what you said there, which is money loves speed. So, you know, we're, we're all about that as well, you know, keep moving the money, like you say, and, yeah. you know, always okay. invest in something. What do you know about John, Fiona and I? I know you, you're all very experienced, you know, I know you've got, um, you know, I would say that, you know, the, again, I've only been in property since 2019. So I think I have a lot to learn from, uh, from, you know, someone like yourselves and, I'm the type of person, you know, I always chase being uncomfortable. You know, I chase being in the room where I'm the one that knows the least. Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, if you're in a room where you know the most, then you're wasting your time, quite frankly. So, well, you can you know. never stop. You, you know, like you just said, you, you never stop learning, mm -hmm. do you? You know, no. and I think, I think that's really, that's, and being humble is very, very important. And um, look, thank you very much for coming thank uh, you very today. Much. And, and we'll see you later. What inspired you to sign up for this competition? For me, I'm looking for a partner that's going to take me to my next um, level in my property journey. Um, from becoming an investor to I really want to become a developer. So what have you been investing in? In the last three years, uh, commercial properties in terms of shopping uppers. So we've got three developments now that are ready to be developed. Um, but it's just got to the stage now where right, we need to find builders uh, and we need to start building. How do you feel about facing the panel? Because it's not just John, of course, it's his two associates. I'm quite excited. Um, I'm quite a people's person. I'm quite comfortable talking to people. Um, and I'm just here to be myself really and talk about uh, my journey to date. Um, so a little bit nervous, obviously, but also excited. Hi, Molly. Thank you very much for coming in today. You say in your application that you have learned about many strategies. Does that mean you're a jack of all trades and a master of none? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, in terms of learning, it's ed educating myself and, and then quickly understanding that there's quite a few strategies out there that are not for me. Uh, just rent to rent, service accommodation, those kind of things. Me and too. Actually, and actually mm. understanding quite quickly the strategy that I do want to take forward as my journey, and that's the commercial strategy. Okay. So as you know, we have a, a commercial expert here today mm -hmm. in Kirsty. Um, we all do commercial. Uh, comm uh, I think Kirsty shouts about it more than us, doesn't she, Fiona? <laughs> probably. Uh, <laughs> and makes a very good living at it as well. So Kirsty, do you want to crack on with a question? Yeah, so why why commercial property? 
For me, commercial was just showing me that you can be very, very creative um, in terms of you know what you can achieve when you look at a building. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not creative. Uh, you know, I spent 20 years doing IT, and then eventually now I'm kind of full time property. But I like to look at buildings. I like to go out. I like to pound the streets and look at things and just think actually. There's a lot more that I can add value to when I look at a property. Um, and I know that you can do the same with homes, but I think they have a ceiling. Um, and that's why the commercial strategy has really appealed to me. Okay, yeah, so forced appreciation. Um, and how do you go about finding those commercial deals? I've been quite lucky. So um, since the first property that we bought in 2019, I've kind of surrounded myself with people that are doing commercial property. And also I go out, I, I like to be in my car and I drive around. I have two young children, you know, drop them to school and I spend the day really out and about on the streets, talking to agents, um, looking at, you know, areas that I'm interested in. Uh, and really Rightmove, you know, websites like that. And then from Rightmove, really having a look at seeing what agents there are in the areas and just having the confidence to contact those agents and speaking to them uh, and see what else they've got, you know, and, and going down and meeting them. And as an early, relatively early stage investor, and well done for the resume of what you're working on at the moment, how do you get those agents to take you seriously? So I come from 20 years of working in the IT and I think, you know, it's, it's been a very male dominated industry. So having broken that and, you know, introducing more women into, in, into that industry, I don't, I don't fear talking to uh. agents, you know, I mean, the first time that I did pick up the phone and speak to an agent, it was, it was frightening because I thought, I don't know what I'm doing. And now when I speak to them, I speak to them with confidence to say, hey, listen, you're uh. trying to do a deal and I'm trying to do a deal. Um, let's, let's work together. So, um, the commercial market's been on the floor for three or four years, and there's it's been in recession for three or four years at least, hasn't it, Kirsty? I would say, and and actually the residential is following, and I mean there's lots and lots of opportunities, and and we all take advantage of those. So if you if you're coming in here to say, look, um, with the the one million pounds worth of funding, I want to do some commercial deals, I don't have a problem with that. I mean that's something that I, I'd say we're in the best market we've had for yeah three years at least yeah. in terms of deal flow. Um, so, you know, it's, it's well, I would, harnessing that. I would say you're in the best market you've had since 2008, 2009, genuinely. Potentially, it's getting there. I mean, it, <laughs> it's on its floor, it's on the floor. And there's several deals you've listed in your application. Um, have you done any through to completion all the way through the cycle from so, purchase to so exit? We, so the three that I've mentioned, they're purchased. Um, so now I'm trying to get to the exit. So yeah. we've, got, um, we've got planning on the first property. Second property is a grade listed building. So um, we are now working with the heritage to get the planning. And the third one is we've just bought now. Um, but that's the next challenge is really to build them out. So I'm trying to get from being an investor to a developer where I can team up with someone like yourself, John, to get me to develop it. And how many options have you got in terms of getting out of the deal? How many options? Is there one option, two options? or are So we've had a couple of options on, on most of them, you know, so we've worked out the exit strategy yeah. of what we want to do. Um, currently, ideally, um, we would like to hold the property. But again, it depends where the market is in a year's time when we do the bill to say, is it sensible now to sell them well, on I th I think, or do we hold them? I think funding has a lot to do with that as well, interest rates as well, doesn't it? Kirsten? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and rising building costs. costs. So what do you think is your biggest challenge, Johnny? It's finding the right building team. That's, that's, you know, it, it's a huge challenge, um, more so than kind of going out and doing any deal analysis. It's just really finding a team that mm. could be trusted and you know that are going to deliver what you have worked towards. Mm. I think that's, that's been the biggest challenge. And, 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 you know, I've struggled with that for the past year. Molly, let me tell you something. You're going to struggle for the next 40 odd years. <laughs> it doesn't get yeah, better. It doesn't get, it doesn't get any easier. And, and what I would say, the bigger the deal, the better the contractors. The more consultants you have, uh, I mean, the, the big deals I've did recently was 26 million um, bill costs. And at that level, there's no problems. You know, there really isn't because you've got so many consultants, you know, looking after you, if you like, co covering every angle. But it's an expensive, you know, yeah. obviously. The alternative level. is to find a builder as a, as a business partner, which is what I did. <laughs> Because I'm really lazy, and I just went, oh, I'll just, I'll just find one. So, are you going to keep the ground floor commercial of these investments? We is are, that the yes. intention? Yeah. Oh, and all three of them, because they are all income generating, and we've got tenants, so they're not vacant. They're not vacant properties, okay. and, I, and I tend not to look at vacant um, properties. And if you looked at the capital allowances. 
the commercials? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, we do see, we do, we have been speaking to the solicitors in terms of um, the allowances, um, and the first one they do believe there are some, so we are looking at that. That will please mm. Fiona. She loves a bit <laughs> yeah. of capital allowances. Easy money. <laughs> Look, Molly, thank you very much for coming in today. Um, very interesting listen to you, and um, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Pleasure. You. What made you want to apply for property graduate? I have been in uh, properties uh, about five years. I'm still in full-time employment, but uh, properties were always something uh, I wanted to do. How are you going to feel when you go up against the panel? Be a bit nervous. <laughs> I'm sure everybody else is. But uh, yeah, I just want to be myself, you know, if it comes true and maybe, you know, like the personality resonates with what John is looking for, then uh, I'm sure it will be fine. And, it's already an opportunity in itself, uh, you know, to be uh, in front of them. So I'm grateful for it. Thank you. Elise, welcome. Thank you. Thank you welcome Jen. to The Graduate. You say it's your dream to be a full-time property developer and investor. I am currently still in full-time employment. So uh, though I work remotely, so I can work from anywhere as long as I have access to laptop. Uh, property is always something which uh, inspired me and you know, it's an area where you have to use your creative brain, analytical mind, meeting people. So I like to feel buzzed and uh, that's where I feel really alive. So I would like to get to the next uh, level and work with, uh, you know, uh, like you all, experienced property developer, investors. And well, What I liked about your, your um, application was that you've got 10 properties at the moment, roughly. Yes and you're still in full-time work. Yeah. And the reason I like that is because so many people about, you hear about, oh, I'm now a pro full-time property developer or investor. And you say, how many properties have you got? And they go, one. Yeah. You know, and it's madness because that, that income, you know, the, the, your job is so important to support what you do. So I think you've got that round the right way up to now. There's a point where you need to jump, of course. Yeah. And, um, and, and obviously, if you win this competition, that was a great, perhaps a great time to do that. Yeah, because I was going to query on bandwidth. You know, you've got everything going on. You've got your yeah. full time job, but though it is remote, plus all these properties. What mm. kind of bandwidth would you be able to offer John of you to win this competition? Uh, at the moment, uh, when I'm off from my day job, I'm always in properties. I haven't been on holidays for at least four years. So does that not make you run down and burned out or no? No, you, because you... I like my brain works the best when I think about what can I do next. I'm she always uh, pushing the bar in front of me. And uh, my, if you have seen my application that since being in the UK, I yes. have built myself wow. up on the curry ladder as well. Yes, you, you have. Yeah. Uh, and Fiona, and may I say, Kirsty, you don't need to be going on holiday all the time. I haven't been oh. on holiday for 10 years properly. So well, it wouldn't do you. for us good all to be you. the same, would it, it John? Wouldn't. No, but good for you. Good for you. <laughs> so you said you find deals on Rightmove. Do you look anywhere else for deals on, or where else would you look for deals? Yeah, so obviously build a network of uh, other uh, like-minded uh, investor sources. Uh, I may reach out to Neil from Series Two, you know, because he mm. always said that he has a lot of deals, and uh, be con talking with agents, auction catalogs anywhere where I can find something which works. A million pounds is a lot of money. What would you invest a million pounds in with John? Currently, we are looking at a, a property in uh, Bispam, which is close to where we live. It's a four flat in its current layout. Uh, there was planning uh, uh, granted, I think it was in 2013 for an 11 uh, uh, apartment conversion, which with the current build cost, I don't think it may work. So I'm looking at like a plan B to use the extending footprint of the building, but maybe go up in the loft, convert it to six, if possible, uh, flats. And then because it's right in the promenade, uh, service accommodation, capital allowances, and all the uh, fun and nice bits which Ooh. comes with it. Yeah. Service accommodation seems to be incredibly popular for you. <laughs> it's yeah. cash flow. Yeah. That's the attraction. Mm. So I don't, I don't really need cash flow. I want capital gain. Yeah. Mm. And what, what about the exit on service accommodation? So how, how do you get out of the deal to realise the profit? It could be obviously uh, converted into like uh, apartment flats. So, you know, you resell, title, split uh, and uh, sell it to somebody else who wants the cash flow. So there is multiple ways of benefiting from. That's a good, that's a good point.
It's yeah. a good point. There's more. There's more than one ways of skinning a cat, as we say, isn't there? You know, mm. um, I think that that selling on to another um, investor is getting more difficult because of the because it, because of interest rates going yeah. up so high. You know, I think that's a a problem. But people move to assets in times of inflation. So well, yeah, yeah, they love they love income. I agree with you uh, because it's certainty, and and I, I understand that. But I still think it's going to be difficult going forward. Because of interest rates, that's that's all hot. Or, yeah, more difficult. Yeah, you you yeah. do need multiple exits. I would yeah. say. So, what yeah. do you think is your biggest challenge? Biggest challenge. I always had a little bit of fear in my mind. You know, like I like to look at big deals, but I didn't necessarily have the right people around me who finance like those sorts of uh, developments. So there was always an element of how, where do I need to go to find the next level of uh, uh, people and. Because of that, I stepped back a little bit, you know, so I went for the next level, but something which I still feel like I can achieve. Uh, uh, and Yeah, I think that's very sensible. And let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with having some fear. You need fear. You need to yeah. be cautious. And what worries me with so many people that I speak to at different events when I speak and so on, is that a lot of them see no danger. They see no fear. Mm -hmm. And you're better off to have seen see more fear than the no fear at all that's for sure honest especially at the moment yeah you know i don't think that's a bad thing i think i think that's actually a quality you have thank you um definitely so these are all great things you're saying but convince us why you should be this year's property graduate why we should put you through to the next round as my cv or application has shown i am a very driven person if i have a target in front of me i will just achieve it Anything which I have achieved to date, uh, I didn't have anybody in this country. Uh, so I was on my own with thousand pounds, really, what was I, my starting capital yep. when I arrived. Have 10 properties uh, all together uh, in my full-time job. I am now at an associate director level, so starting from nothing. Mm. And uh, whilst climbing through the career ladder or like doing properties, I'm still, you know, like uh, being the best in my day jobs and always learning what's the next I need to. So we've had a lot of really qualified applications and we've got 15 people here, all driven also. What sets you apart from those people downstairs? <laughs> Waiting to come and tell us why they should be the next graduate. I'm just driven. I don't need hand-holding. I like to learn. I'm always proactively looking at what can I do by myself. And mm. then if there is a mentor around me, then obviously that's helping me to guide me. But I don't need to be hold my hands. I will just yeah. go Excellent. do and uh, proactively. Good. Right. Very good. Well, good, answer. Okay. good answer. Good answer. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for coming and we'll see you later. Thank you so much Thank for you. the opportunity. We've got to decide who we're going to put through, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, Andreas, a uh, young man from Leeds, I liked I liked him. What did you think, Fiona? I think we have had a strong set really of strong. candidates this year. Yeah. So each and every one yeah. really brought their best. I thought they did. So they've made it a really tough yeah. decision. Andreas yeah. used the word obsessed. Obsessed, that's interesting. Yeah, he was a bit that's intense. A bit... Uh, he was sort of a bit intense for they me. He called but... himself successful. Yeah. So he's got confidence. Mm. Successful, about about 19 years old, you know. I'm yeah. not being funny, confidence, but a bit older than that. But... Successful source, six-figure sourcing business. Yeah. Portfolio of buy to lets yeah. all that. So we've, so we've got Andreas. I mean, what do you think, Kirsty? He's got what it takes. I don't know if he's got quite enough experience, no. but I think no, it's but, worth but, seeing but, how, but he, how he yeah, analyzes we'll, the deal, we'll, maybe. Yeah, we'll have to see, because we're going to have to make a decision on this. Molly, um, I like Molly. Quiet, but serious. Yeah, you know. yeah I agree. Uh, she hasn't seen a deal to exit, though. So no, she's got a couple no, of deals, she but hasn't. none she's it's seen. It's very interesting how some exit. of these people analyse. You know, we get next round, that's when it gets really yeah. tough for them. Elise, uh, interesting lady again. You know, uh, some good ladies this year. Some good. Yeah, I think good I, Elise is really interesting. Yeah. I think she was collected. She's, she's done mm. a lot in a short space yeah, of time. Yeah, she's busy, she's got full-time jobs, she's um, got it all going you know, on. She's got the drive. Yeah, yeah uh, she has. Yeah. You're diligent, hardworking. Yeah. It'd be um, great to see how she does in round two, analysing um, the deal. And we've got Sophie. Sophie's Cabin. focused on rent to rent, isn't rent she? To rent, rent to rent yeah. HMOs. Yeah. Um, and I, I felt she struggled with the exit plan. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe, but she's a bit, definitely a connector. She's, got, got, she's, yeah, she's a, a good, connector. A good networker, I agree with you. What do you think of Ben? Uh, Ben's I think Ben's got a really good attitude. Nice attitude. He's done some nice good man. stuff nice in attitude. Yeah. SA. Yeah. 
Uh, question has, yeah, has he got enough experience? Experience. Yeah. It's well presented, well presented, good attitude. Nice man. I'd um, like to see him back in two years. I think he just needs a little bit yeah, more experience. Maybe, under maybe. His belt. that's your opinion. It may not be mine or it may not be Kirsty's. Mm. So, you know, uh, Daniel. Some concerns about his capacity yeah. since he's working. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. But financially literate, I would think. Yes. Yeah, process. Smart, smart man. Smart yeah. man. Strong focus on the auctions, which is smart when you're busy. Yes, I agree with that. Now let's see who Kirsty, Fiona and John put through to the second round. Thank you for coming back in. Um, Andreas, Molly, Elise, I'm delighted to say you're through to the challenge. Congratulations. Congratulations. See you next time. Uh, Sophie, Ben and Daniel, thank you very much for coming today. I hope you've enjoyed your day, but unfortunately you will not be going through to the challenge this time, but please, please keep in touch and uh, we'll see you again soon. Coming up in the next episode, we'll meet the other eight competitors who'll be looking to join Andreas, Molly and Elise in the challenge. We will see you then. Property Graduate is proudly sponsored by Surtax Accounting.